The Full Spectrum Podcast, presented by Champions and Legends. Champions and Legends produces hemp-derived CBD sports supplements for athletic preparation, performance, and recovery. This is the Full Spectrum Podcast with Big Data and Maverick, available wherever you get your podcasts. Big Data, welcome back to... I get we're doing this virtually, and I got to be honest with you, we're never doing this again. You are, I don't care what COVID ever does to this world, you are never to leave my side again. Technology and me don't get along, and apparently it wasn't helping you either, my friend. Maverick, keep it in the family. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I don't want to fluster too much, but I want to talk to the CEO. I want a direct call with the CEO about this whole technology thing. This is a, a unprecedented. I can't handle this. My stress level is already over the top. I can't do it. <laughs> Take it easy. Take no, it easy. You know what I need? I need a vacation, maybe up to the Great White North. I need to head up to the Great White North and uh, just maybe do some skiing because I, I need some I need some away time from this whole thing. Well, I'll tell you what. If you do go to a place called Jasper. Yes, I've heard of Canada, Jasper. Yeah. Uh, they're warning the visitors, do not let the moose lick the salts off your car first off if a moose comes up to my car the last thing i'm gonna care about is if a moose wants to lick the salt off my car number two i'm gonna let it you know why i want to see how a moose licks have you seen how big a tongue a moose has well not up close because it's very dangerous and they might hoove you to death but other than that (laughs) it's a great idea (laughs) hey i'm interested you know that's that's called an experience Big data. That's called experience, you know, checking it out. You know, you know, speaking of vacations, you know where I want to go just because, look, man, 2020 has already been a very trying year, the COVID thing. Well, just the other day, Utah authorities found a shiny object in the middle of the Utah desert. They have no explanation for this thing. It's literally as, as tall as 12 feet high. And the people that kind of investigate the valley or the desert that, that this was found, they have no idea how this possibly could have got there. By the way, it's planted into the ground. Like whoever got it there made a lot of effort and or, dare I say, maybe the outside people are starting to show us a little signs that they're not so far away, big data. Thoughts? I know what happens. What's that? This is a classic episode of Transformers. That piece of metal is from optimus prime you know what it's easily explained that exactly and you know what he was actually a good guy so we, we, we shouldn't be worried right we shouldn't be worried exactly <laughs> exactly you know but the way 2020 is going you know what just bring on the aliens like let's just put it out like let's just bring them over now let's talk about it and end it once and for all let's just Bring it all out into the forefront. Let's just hear about it. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you one thing that I have to say. Uh, despite moose licking my cars, uh, a piece of metal found in the middle of a desert in Utah, how about we bring it back to some normalcy? Last week, I talked about Fight Club. You know, Montreal found a Fight Club at their prestigious university, and a whole bunch of nerds were just raining haymakers on each other. I got one better for you. In Astoria, New York City, Sheriff Police broke up. What? Not so much a fight club, a different kind of club, a swingers club. 80 people without masks, all having crazy sex, doing their thing out there. But the big thing is, that's how you get the COVID uh, big data. You, you can't just be doing swinger parties without the mask. You know, I'm guessing the positivity rate at that party was uh, 100%. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm wondering, I, I wonder, is it one of those things where you put the keys in a bowl and you just all hang out? But what if you're going to put the keys in the bowl and you're randomly doing what you're doing there, just leave the mask on. What's the big deal? Now, you got to keep it. You, you got to take it off because that makes the difference in this whole situation. This well, I think these geniuses were probably uh, <laughs> putting their masks in the bowl and then grabbing a mask. Putting it on. I still want to know, like, how do you how do you get to that party? You show up and you're like, yeah, I'm here for the swinger party. How you doing? I, I'm here for the like. What? It's so it's got to be so weird. You just like start taking your pants off at the door. What? Like, what? What do you do when you go to these parties? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's all about the Facebook uh, story after, right? So good point. Good point. These you days, know, people don't have that much to put on their Facebook. So. <laughs> it's so true, man. Listen, let's get into it. Uh, people probably want to hear a little bit of the, what's going on in the sporting world. 
I, I won't lie to you, I could have listened to a little bit more of you and I talking about swinger parties, but I digress. Speaking of crazy parties, you know who had the big parties when it comes to sports, athletes, and everything like that? It's the boxing world. This weekend, November 28th, it's that infamous fight that we've all been waiting for. It's Iron Mike Tyson taking on Roy Jones Jr. in what's supposed to be kind of an exhibition, but a lot of people think that this might get a little bit more feisty, let's say, than just a, your, your typical exhibition. What are your thoughts on the big fight this weekend? Do you like Tyson heading back to the ring with Roy Jones, or do you think this is just all a crazy publicity stunt? I mean, it's obviously a bit of a publicity stunt. Um, they're both in their 50s. Uh, Tyson is uh, slightly older than Roy. Uh, Tyson hasn't had a real fight since 2005. He's had a few uh, exhibition uh, fights since. Uh, at least Roy's been fighting not that long ago. A couple of years ago, he had a fight. Uh, but apparently, he's significantly smaller than he used to be. So, uh, in the end, I don't care how old he is, I do not want to fight Mike Tyson. I think it's Mike Tyson all the way here. Well, exactly. You know what? To to uh, I would say agree with you 100%. I've, I've saw, I saw Mike Tyson on a few, um, let's call it podcasts, and I've seen him on some interviews lately. He is a he's huge into the marijuana world now with uh with regards to cannabis and everything like that. He's got this huge farm. It's doing extremely well. He lost a lot of he he was kind of heavy. He let himself go, but got back into shape. He looks phenomenal at fifty something years old, and he's ready to rock and roll. But the last interview I just saw with him a couple of days ago, Big Data, he's got the there's something emotionally going on with this guy, and I don't know if he knows it's a real fight or not a fight. I think uh, I. Roy better stay away from him and do a lot of running around the ring because if Mike hits you, he's still got that power and he will absolutely probably knock your head off. So, I mean, no disrespect to Roy Jones, but there's reasons there was weight classes in, in boxing and this is maybe not the smartest idea uh, for either for either party really. At the and end I of the would day. say, Roy, wear some ear guards. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Curious to see how that'll go, especially, I don't, is there an attendance? Do you know if there's attendance for that? I, I forgot to look. I believe there is. Yeah. You know, unbelievably enough, I think there is fans in attendance. It's like eyes wide shut, all these all these rich people with masks on their faces watching <laughs> watching them going, Tom Cruise will be there and everything like that. From there we go to another fight. It was just announced a couple of days ago. A friend of a friend. It's it's uh, our good friend, Thor Bjornsson. Who is he? The mountain, yeah. The biggest and baddest man truly in the world is has signed a, a fight for next September 2021 to take on a guy named Eddie Hall. Who's Eddie Hall? He's a, uh, you know, he's a strongman co- competitor. And him and Thor don't really like each other. So they decided, hey, why don't we put on some gloves and literally probably end up killing each other. And if I'm a better, which I am, I'm going to be honest with you and say I'm taking Thor in the first round. And it's going to be basically... I'm hoping Thor has his authorities or his lawyer on hand because it's going to be a bloodbath. And if anyone has seen, obviously, the Game of Thrones, we saw what he does when he's upset. I'm thinking, Eddie, you might just want to be quiet and get yourself out of this fight sooner than later. You know, this podcast is firmly in the mountain in Thor's corner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Listen, I have always wanted to be a holdback guy. Do you think Thor would want us to be holdback guys? You know, I think we can request that from the CEO, actually. I think, yeah. I think we can actually make that happen. Um, he might want some bigger guys, but we can give it a shot. Yeah, man. I mean, growing up, me and you, we, we had to get involved a couple of times with a couple of guys. We're like, oh, wait, oh, oh, hey, guys, come on. Hey, hey, take it easy. I don't know if I really want to be in between these two guys, but I'm willing to take that sacrifice for the sake of the podcast. Uh, I think it's a good uh, bucket list item post COVID. You know what? Write that down. Get it ready for the for the CEO. I think this is one of the items that uh, he can he can at least uh, give us an opportunity to fight for. You know, love it. I like it. All right. From there, let's head over to the NCAA. The committee. Who are these guys? These guys are a bunch of guys. They're all sitting around a table, and they have decided who the top five NCAA teams are that are going to go for the national championship. This is obviously now the real time. This is where the players were ranked, or pardon me, the teams were ranked over the last few weeks, but now these rankings actually mean something. Who's number one? Well, big, big surprise. It's Alabama. Number two, it's Notre Dame. Number three, it's Clemson. Number four, Ohio State, where they should be. And at number five, it's Texas A&M. But that actually didn't take the headlines. Big data. Tell everyone why the NCAA 
and a team like Clemson took the headlines this week. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first I'm going to start with the committee. Um, you know, we have a lot of college football games being canceled uh, due to the virus and various coaches and, and, and team members getting, you know, testing positive before games and causing cancellations. Uh, the, you know, geniuses at the uh, NCAA football committee said, you know, all these folks are traveling to play the games. We're going to travel to meet together uh, to show you a preview of what <laughs> the college playoffs going to look like. We're all going to Texas. We're going to stay in a room together and we're going to, we're going to do the ranking. So bravo NCAA. I hope it wasn't a super spreader event. Uh, but yeah, Dabo was none too happy uh, that the Florida State game uh, was postponed, possibly canceled. Uh, Clemson spent $300,000 taking the whole team to the, Tallahassee to get ready for the game. Unfortunately, they did let a player with symptoms on the plane. Uh, he did end up testing positive uh, for the virus. And Florida State said, hey, thanks for uh, bringing that plane full of COVID to our town, but no thanks. We don't want to play. Dabo was upset. He thought Florida State was doing it just to, you know, get out of getting whooped by Clemson. And, you know, Clemson, you know, they need this game to try and stay, you know, in the playoff hunt there. Uh, in the end, I think it's a lot of hot air by Dabo. I think Florida State was well within their rights to to cancel or postpone the game. And the person or persons missing from the whole equation, oh, the ACC. They're supposed to be the referees. Is there yeah, is that's their true. conference? They're supposed to say who gets to play and what the rules are and if anyone broke the rules. But no, they left it to the two teams. Uh, Florida State said no thanks. And, uh, you know, Dabble basically blew a gasket after. Uh, in the end, I think it's Florida State's, you know, is their right to, to not play. Um, now, should there be some sort of compensation for Clemson? Possibly, they, you know, they went out of their way and they spent a lot of money and whatnot. I think the ACC should take care of them a little bit. But in the end, I think Florida State's in the right here and, and Dabo's barking up the wrong tree. But, you know, I, I got not to be the devil's advocate here, but I'm going to I'm gonna take a little side on Dabo. And, I'll, and here's my thing on it. We're talking about the state of Florida where they basically have no rules from what I've seen whatsoever. Every day they're breaking their own record for the amount of COVID cases. So you mean to tell me they canceled the game – where one player had it, and they're like, no, no, that's one too many, but the whole state is under flux the whole time. I get his point. I can see why he's mad. I agree, obviously, from a serious point of view, that it should have been canceled. However, I can kind of see where his frustration lies. I mean, they lost to Notre Dame. He wants some redemption. He's ready to rock and roll. Uh, Trevor's, Trevor's ready to play. And then Florida State's like, nah, nah, no, nah, we're good. We don't want to play you guys. Smart yeah, move, smart move by Florida State, but you gotta, you gotta be like, come on, man, like, you know, at the end of the day, your whole, your whole state is under siege with COVID. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, Dabo and Clemson, I don't know how much credibility they have as well from the point of view that I'm pretty sure Trevor Lawrence had COVID, and it was within the 14 days, and he was watching the game on the sidelines. True. I think people are not too confident in the uh, the protocols on the Clemson sideline. You know what? Once again, you've pro- you've proved me right. You you've proved me wrong. Part of me. Once again, well done, sir. Well done. Yes, you are absolutely right. He was on the sideline during one of those games for sure, where he shouldn't have been. And uh, yeah, all right, we'll go from there. Listen, over the last couple of weeks, let's get to your bread and butter. It's the NBA, the free agency, the draft. I mean, I don't know where to start. I'll let you do your thing. I pulled up a couple of things. I want to bring it up to you. Big data, have at her, enjoy, because this is probably the last time you'll talk about it for until they start up in a couple of weeks. So have at her, my friend. Go at it. You know, first of all, I want to say thank you, NBA, for such a short off season. Uh, I feel like I just finished watching the finals. And now you're back. You're back in my life. Training camps start next week. Uh, we had the NBA draft. Um you know, was not too noteworthy. It went. Uh, Let's call much... it what it was. It was boring. Come on, just it was, say it. Just say well, it. Maybe even, for 
Maybe even, we're not no, no, even for not. No, no. Even for you, you know, I know how I, much you love it, but be honest, it was boring. Come on. Come well, on. Let's let's just say I still sat in front of the TV for four hours and watched <laughs> all 60 picks. <laughs> but let's get to it. So we've got the uh, number one pick ended up being Anthony Edwards from Georgia. Uh, number two, James Wiseman, who I guess we can say he played at Memphis, but he was there for like three games in a, in a heartbeat. So I don't, I don't even know if we can say that. Yeah, good point. LaMelo Ball, the third ball brother, uh, went third to the Charlotte Hornets. And then a big surprise, the Bulls out of nowhere uh, took a Florida State Reserve named Patrick Williams, who's the first big surprise of the draft. He had been shooting up the draft boards. Um, I don't know how happy I am that that Chicago made this move. I don't know if they should necessarily be uh, going, you know, off the board to make a a wild pick uh, that early in the draft, but they did it. Uh, other notables, OB Toppin, College Basketball Player of the Year, and who I think was the best player in the draft, and who most likely, unless the Knicks ruin him, mm-hmm. could be the rookie <laughs> of the year in the NBA next year. Uh, really good pick for them. You know, I really like those Jason Tatum style players. They're really starting to take over the league. And Absolutely. I, I think the Knicks lucked out and they got a, a really good player there. And then uh, falling to number 12, Tyrese Halliburton, uh, who's best known in the draft for having uh, his girlfriend there. Yes. I saw that. Online that was the best part of the draft, by the way. Uh, he slid to the Kings at number 12. Well done. Um, I think you were going to look back in that Patrick Williams or, um, you know, there's a few other picks in the top 10, Macoro. Uh, we might look back and say, wow, how could you have passed on, on Halliburton, which, you know what, in the NBA, it always happens. Uh, the NBA teams are, you know, really bad in general at making picks. And we'll, we'll probably see, you know, a, a surprise from later in the draft. The you know, overall doesn't seem like the strongest draft, but, um, you know, time will tell. We we can see, you know, some some really talented players, but a lot of you know they're not that polished, and they're going to have to do a lot of development. And in the NBA, again, uh, development is king. You're seeing the Spurs, the Celtics, uh, the Raptors. You know, they're really doing great development jobs now uh, with these players, and you know they get them in their program. And you can take a, a second round pick, a late first round pick, and you can turn them into a really good player. So uh, we'll see. What happens? That's awesome. I got a couple of questions for you. Let's jump over to the free agent side of it just because I saw some huge numbers going across, and I did my homework, so I think you're going to be a little proud of me. So watch this. Brandon Ingram just signed five years, 158 with the Pelicans. Here's a guy that a couple of years ago was uh, on the Lakers, correct? And, That's right. And, and my big thing is, okay, he's going to play with Zion. That's all cool. Isn't that a lot of money? Five years, 158 for Brandon Ingram? Like, that's, uh, I think that's kind of big money for a guy that a couple years ago got traded basically, I don't want to say for nothing, but for nothing. And uh, so, well, I don't know. I mean, let's not say for nothing. So, he got traded with a whole bunch of guys. He, it was That was the Anthony Davis deal. Right. So, obviously, you know, it worked out for the Lakers. They won the title. They gave mm-hmm. up three really good players and almost all of their draft picks for the rest of eternity uh, to the Pelicans. Um, you know, Brandon Ingram, he was the uh, most improved player last year. He was an all-star. Uh, New Orleans is a small market. These small market teams, they got to keep their players. Um, we saw, in addition to him, we saw Tatum, Mitchell, Fox, and Bam Adebayo all right. get the maximum deals. Uh, they show them as five years, $163 million, uh, based on the salary cap right now. And then they actually can go up to 195 million based on, you know, making all NBA teams, making all star teams, making all these different uh, postseason awards. Uh, you can get a different percentage of the cap, and you know, all these guys really like. If you're Utah, if you're Sacramento, uh, even Boston has not been a, a, you know, a ton of free agents going there. Um, Miami is a little different. They they do get a lot of free agents, but typically. You know, you want to lock up these young guys. A uh, great example was last year everyone thought, wow, Denver gave Jamal Murray a max contract. And now today everyone would say, well, he's totally worth a max contract. Uh, you know, he had a great season last year. He had great playoffs. 
and you're you know you're banking on potential and you're also banking on opportunity costs like you can't find uh, players like this so they do end up getting paid a lot of money and though typically uh, by the end of the five year deal uh, normally it's worth it you know what listen i i'll say one thing about the nba bravo with these contracts like gordon hayward okay here's a guy he's he's been hit by the injury bug pretty hard he decided to leave $36 million on the board with Boston, and he ends up signing with who? The Hornets, four years, 120. You got your best friend, Bogdanovich. He, by the way, what happened there? He doesn't go to the Clipper or he doesn't go to the Milwaukee Bucks. He ends up with the Atlanta Hawks, four years, 72 million. And if you really like international ball, Dalino Galliardi is over at Atlanta as well, three years, 61.5. Atlanta's turning into some sort of Euro ball over there. What's going on over there? <laughs> no, they are for sure. You know, I mean, they made a big mistake. You know, we've talked, you know, this is the premier eminent Bogdan podcast in the world. Yes, it uh, really we've is. We've talked about him more than they talk about him in Serbia. Bogdan, <laughs> you, don't Huge fans. With, you don't mess with his money. They didn't, the Bucks and the Kings, they didn't really take his uh, feelings into consideration. Uh, they were going to offer him around 15 or 16 million a year. And Bogdan said, no, I'm worth 18 a year. I will ruin your trade and I will sign with the lowly Atlanta Hawks for $18 yeah. million dollars a year. Talk about making your statement, man. Holy cow. Well, here's the last thing I wanted to bring up. The team that, in my opinion, somehow is going under the radar and I don't know how, and I think they improved their team <laughs> And they just won the championship. It's you, L.A. Lakers, getting Mark Gasol, grabbing uh, Schreider. This team, and then who did they pick up just the other day as well? They, uh, they ended up getting uh, Harrell, uh, Montreal's Harrell from the, from the Clippers over to the, to the Lakers. Did they just not get way better, or am I going crazy? So I think the Lakers, uh, they, they, they made some good additions to the team, I agree. Um, and, you know, frankly, you don't need much around Davis and LeBron. And they didn't actually have that much uh, last year, and they still won the whole thing. Uh, I can't see Harrell playing at the end of game in a crunch time with Anthony Davis. I would see more of a, a Gasol pairing with Davis mm-hmm. or, or Davis playing with Kuzma at the four. Uh, so I don't know how good of a deal it is from that point of view, but for the regular season, having Harold, you know, he was he's a six man of the year guy. Exactly. Uh, so having him come off the bench is definitely going to be a big, uh, a big bonus for the Lakers. Um, I think Schroeder also is is going to be really good for them. Uh, but what I really want to bring up is this is two years in a row now that the Toronto Raptors have lost two of their players, one each to the LA teams. Yes. So two years ago, obviously, they lost Kawhi after winning the championship. I, I, it seems like two years now. I guess it's just two seasons ago, I should say. True. And, you know, now Serge Ibaka has gone uh, to the Clippers. And then Danny Green went to the Lakers the year before. And now Marcus Gasol is there. So it hmm. sounds like if players are going to leave the Raptors, they only want to go to L.A. You know what? They're just poaching. That's correct. They're poaching those Toronto Raptors. Well, and you said it earlier. It's all about development and no better team than the Raptors that develops their players and shows what happens when you do when they have uh, a championship behind their name now. From and there, and there, yeah. sorry, there might be, must be a good poutine place in LA for these folks to leave Toronto. You know what? That's exactly, that's a great point. There must be a great poutine place. Street, you know what? It's probably like a, one of those uh, food uh, food cars. That's uh, one of the the food trucks. Poutine or trucks. Some, or some uh, some high end VIP place where you park in the back. Well, I'd imagine that there there's a vegan poutine truck somewhere in LA. <laughs> that's what I would imagine right now. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From there, let's jump over to, to the NFL. Week eleven just finished. To be quite honest with you, it was another weird, crazy week. But there are some things that are starting to happen that are just making you go crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw four or five names to you, Big Data. You just pick one and, and jump on it, and we'll play with it a little bit, and then we'll move on. Because it was a fun week, but it wasn't in a crazy week, all right? I'm going to throw out the name Lamar, Taysom Hill, Mahomes, Wentz. Those are your four names. I'll give you those four names. Which one do you want to play with? Well, I'll start with our... 
superstar, most favorite football player, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. You know, you know you're good. He's only he's only been in the league a few years, and we 100% knew that he was going to get the ball back with, you know, just over a minute left of the game. And there was no doubt that he was going to lead his team to victory. Didn't even take all the time. He had even a little bit of time to spare. Throws the touchdown to Kelsey, wins the game, demoralizes the Raiders, and just proves to everyone that he's just a hundred times better than the next best quarterback. Uh, I'll agree with you all the sentiment. I, I think everyone knew that the Raiders should have just, I don't know, like it's unprecedented, but we saw it last week where there were some weird things happening. Take a knee on first down, let the clock keep rolling. You gave them too <laughs> much time left. I know it sounds crazy, but I think that would have been their best way of at least helping themselves. I know that sounds crazy. If you don't mind, I got to just say one thing. Lamar Jackson, hey, you know where you know you know you know what you need to do, Lamar? Look at the bench. There's a guy named Robert Griffin the 3rd over there. Just ask him what happens when it all comes crashing down. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to leave it there. We're going to get into there. some like Facebook group about a we're going to be like a Lamar hater podcast. I, I'm not I, I don't want to say I'm a hater. I'm just saying this was bound to happen. From there, I want to. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to. I'll. I'll take this one. You take the next one. I'll take Taysom Hill. This guy is a flash in the pan. This guy was awesome. This guy is fun to watch, and he's kind of he's the next generation of Jackson. This guy is going to bring the Saints for the next four games. He's going to run that offense. He might win a couple of games. He might even go four and zero. Who knows? But this guy cannot be the answer. They all the New Orleans Saints have to do is watch Lamar and say, you know what. As good as Hill is, we don't want that. We'd rather leave him as a wildcat and scare every team every time he comes onto the field. Great fun to watch this guy, but I don't think he's the answer as the backup going forward. And I'll let you take on the last one. Go ahead. You know who's not great fun to watch? (laughs) Yeah. Carson Wentz. Oh, Oh. How fast can the city of Philadelphia turn on their quarterback? And for good reason. I was just going to say, but they have every reason to, man. This guy... Is getting so I just heard this th- today. Next year, it's either give them thirty-two million dollars. You want to get rid of them? It's going to cost you guys sixty. There's your dilemma, Philly fan. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, I don't even like it's. You know, there's there's some like new movie where Vince Vaughn is like impersonating or takes over like a a girl's body and she's in high school or something like that. Yes, I like, saw that. Someone movie. has taken over Carson Wentz, and this someone. <laughs> is just, like, not there. I, I hate to say this. Did somebody take over, or are we just seeing what I think a lot of people saw? Look, I know a lot of people get mad at me when I talk about Wentz, and I'm not a pessimist all the time, okay? I know it seems like I am normally, but I'm not. But here's the thing with Wentz. He had a 14-game stretch where he was rocking and rolling before he got injured, and that's what everyone's pressing on his legacy on. That's great. You guys want to live on that and give him that huge contract, which Philly fan did? That's on you guys. He, his, his, his playing abilities were, were great. He was doing his thing. He got injured. Just like Dak. Like Jerry Jones is not going to make that same mistake because at the end of the day, this league, the one thing it doesn't do is wait for anyone. It will steamroll every single one of you, like I said, Lamar. From there, let's go to pump and dump. And, you know, that is a great, great intro to Pump and Dump. We've got some great quarterbacks to talk about in the top four. Kyler Murray once again takes over the mantle. Patrick Mahomes in second. Russell Wilson third. Aaron Rodgers rolling into fourth place ahead of Allen. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't (laughs) want to talk about it. Bottom QB. He's a little injured, but I'm still going to give him some grief. Matt Stafford, eight points last week. Yeah, they said he had an injury in his hand, but a bagel for the Detroit Lions, not acceptable. Against Carolina. That's crazy. Unbelievable. Let's roll to the running backs. Uh, Pretty much the same crew again. We've got Dalvin Cook ahead by a mile still. Kamara, second place, doing really well. Henry, he had that game-winning touchdown again in overtime. He's doing really well. And a new entrant, we've got Arada, Josh Jacobs rolling into the fourth spot in the running back rankings now. 
There is no it, one that runs harder than that guy. That guy just – he seems like he's trying to make a point every time he runs the ball. He's nuts. He's nuts. I'll give you a, a bottom quarterback uh, – running back. I've had some high hopes. Uh, Mixon for the Bengals has been hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, the keys to the castle have been given to Giovanni Bernard and – Four points and four points the last two weeks. So, so no one's got the keys. Outing. The keys are still not working. Okay. The keys are missing. <laughs> uh, top wide receiver, we still got Tyree Kill, number one. Devontae Adams, number two. Our guy, DK Met Bull. Yeah. Three. And unfortunately, he's hurt now, but uh, Adam Thielen snuck back into fourth place with a couple touchdowns last week. He's got the COVID. And one bottom receiver I want to talk about, and this pains me because I do have him in one of my fantasy leagues, and I've been really trusting him for a long time, and I don't know why. Hollywood Brown, Baltimore Ravens, three, one, and zero points in the last three games. Disappointing. I can tell you why. Lamar, go, <laughs> go. <laughs> Just <laughs> We got we got to get you some Lamar counseling. I think. <laughs> uh, top tight end, we got Kelsey, followed by Johnu Smith and Mark Andrews. Bottom tight end, I'm going to go with a Washington football player, Logan Thomas. It's been okay this year. Zero mm-hmm. points last week. Disappointing. Yeah. Top well, defense, we got the Steelers. Bottom defense, we got the Cowboys. No change from last week. And the kickers, again, nobody cares. You know what? But you got to give a little respect to those Cowboys. They ended up beating the Vikings. You got to give them a little respect. They'll get out of that bottom spot. That's all Raiders. That's, that's their spark to have going forward. From there, we're off to the great debate. We're almost done. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, all our U.S. Uh, U.S. fans and all the people that live down here in the States. Hey, it's our Thanksgiving coming up in the next few days. A, a day of football is uh, supposed to be a day with family. We'll see if uh, COVID will let us have that. So here's the great debate. It's one that's been going on for centuries. It's simple. White meat versus dark meat. Big data. What do you like? You know, I got to say on that turkey, love the dark meat. What's same with me? So we can't really fight about it. So what have we always told you? Whatever the answer is that comes out of this podcast, it's the right answer. Dark meat. It's juicier. It's nicer. It's more <laughs> It's more tender in your mouth. Enjoy, everybody. We wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. At least you have three football games you can watch this coming Thursday. Thanks for downloading, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, really appreciate your your time with us. And have a great Thanksgiving. The Full Spectrum Podcast, presented by Champions and Legends. Champions and Legends produces hemp-derived CBD sports supplements for athletic preparation, performance, and recovery. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great time, and get ready. Week 12, and Lamar, I'm sorry. It's not my, it's it's not you, it's me. Nah, nah, it's you. Have a great (laughs) week, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye.